Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Tanya Lady T and this is another edition of All Aboard. Let's get on this train. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, good morning. So glad it's Friday. Yes, yes. Uh, that means I'm one day closer to going to see Kinky Boots. I can't hardly wait, y'all. Anyway, I just wanted to just come on real quick and just talk about um, living on the edge. Um, let me just say this, y'all. Some people, it's like their whole focus in life, every decision they make, it's a living on the edge decision. But yet, when it gets too close to the edge, they want to try to grab your shirt, your collar, your neck, your arm, your hand, and drag you with them while they're trying to live on the edge. And um, again, I, I got some personal things going on in my life um, that I just don't care to expound on, but I can always talk in generalization, you know, Listen, I get so sick and tired. Well, let me let me let me uh, squash that saying because you know what, speaking things about yourself uh -huh, can manifest. It frustrates me when people that you are close to and that you love. Or just people you associate with on on the regular, on a day to day basis. They like living on the edge. They make decisions that they know that they cannot handle. Why do you make decisions? Here, here's my thing. Why do you constantly make decisions that cause and wreak havoc in your life? I'm really just trying to understand that. Whether it be of a financial one, whether it be of a relationship, you just continue to make decisions and make choices that really wreak havoc in your life. And then because we're your family or because again, we're, we're closely associated with you, some kind of way it's gonna affect me. Some kind of way those decisions that you make really truly draw your loved ones in. It's almost inevitable. And we have to constantly, constantly, constantly walk around with a pit in our stomach. And I'm going to tell you something. It's almost, it's so unspeakable what, what's going on uh, with, with, with me. What I'm saying is, y'all, I'm at the point, can, can I just be real? Can I just be real selfish? I'm at a point in my life, and I'm being honest, I'm 46 years old. I tell God, thank you for everything he has brought me, brought me out of, has brought me to, bringing me over, bringing me through, over the river and through the woods. I thank God for everything that he has done for me. Oh my God. And I thank God for everybody that he has placed in my life that has helped me along the way. Via parents, close friends, siblings, whatever. But I'm, I'm gonna be telling, I'm telling y'all, at this point in my life, I am blessed. I've got a good job. I've been on the same job, of course, in different departments for 27 years. I have wonderful bosses that are not just my bosses, but they're mentors and they love God. Um, I have a, a mother whom I love dearly and I call her blessed. Yeah, there's some issues that we go on in our lives that, you know, everything ain't always peaches and cream. And I am, of course, affected by the things that go on around me with my nieces, with my nephews, with my granddaughter, with my son. Um, but, of course, I will never say I, I have arrived. 
Oh no. God is still shaping and molding me. I'm still that clay on the potter's wheel. But when I tell you, I am, I don't want to be, look, maybe I'm just going through this for a season, but I'm being honest with y'all. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. I, I, I don't, 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 I don't want to hear anything about the light bill didn't get paid. Um, can you help? I, I don't want to be bothered. Oh, my car broke down. Um, you know, yeah, I help when when and when I feel like it and I and I don't look for it back. That's the type of person I if I'm gonna help you, I don't look for it back. Unless it's something that I've gotta teach you a lesson that you're not gonna just use me. But for the most part, if I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Oh, it makes my bones cringe just thinking about it. I'm at a point in my life, listen, I like to, listen, I work, I work hard, and I play hard, and I get what I want. I have an awesome man of God in my life where we're evenly yoked, we, it's good companionship, he respects me and my temple and I his, and we have a good time. And that's, and I'll keep that private. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear it no more. I want a season where I don't want to hear nobody's problems. And I'm talking and, and I'm not talking about surface stuff. We we none of us are exempt from whether it be BS. None of us are, are exempt from, you know, the everyday mundane issues. But I'm talking about that stuff that um it's like, well dang on, didn't you go through that? five years ago and you're still going through it. And I understand there are certain things that you just can't come out of quickly. I'm not talking about that. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it's a, it be the same old jokers. Same old jokers. Making these bad decisions. Making these decisions again where they're living on the edge. Living on the edge. But never accomplishing anything. Making moves, but they ain't big moves. They moves that get you so jacked up that you can't even find your way. Not even your family can help you out of these moves you making. But I'm being honest with you. And I, and I, and I guess, I, I know it may sound ugly, but I'm being honest with y'all. I don't want I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with any of that anymore. For a season, for a while, or whatever. Cause like I said, none of us is exempt from, from stuff that goes down. And I'm not talking about crisis. Just like with my, my, my cousin, I ain't talking about stuff like that. Yeah. As a family, you have to band together. He's going through a sickness, but I'm talking about the same old flim flammy, uh, problems that people go through. Um, Ooh, I, I I just I feel I I, I know I'm, I'm stuttering and everything, but if y'all understand what I'm saying, just type "Amen" <laughs> or just you don't even got to agree with me. Just uh, just the fact that you're listening. But I'm telling you, I don't want to be bothered with folk. I really don't. I I I, I don't want you to bother me. I don't want you to bother me. Oh, please don't bother me. And I know that sounds so ugly, <laughs> but I'm serious. I am. I'm. Listen. I'm at peace. I really am, y'all. I am so at peace. And I, and you look, it took me a lifetime to get here. I, I'm not in a rush to run away from it. I'm really not. <laughs> and I'm trying to say this with a smile on my face because I don't want to sound if and look so ugly about it. But when I tell y'all, I don't, I, listen, my little four corners is all I want to be focusing on right now. The Lord has blessed me. Um, I finally, you know, settled that, uh, you know, lawsuit with my accident and injury. Listen, life is good. It's always, God has always been good. But let me tell you something. I'm telling you, I am at a place in my life where I'm ready to just coast for a little while. I'm ready to coast. I'm ready to put stuff on cruise control. I, I want to be, you know, somebody say, you know, like I said, be the same ones. That if they say it, it's like, mm, I don't want my pit of my stomach to feel like, okay, what can I do? What can I remix? What can I do to help them? Mm -mm. I got me a little nest egg now where 
I don't have to worry about holding off paying this bill so this can be taken care of. Uh-uh. Listen, when you get older, like me, I'm, I'm preparing for my retirement. Let me tell you. I have maxed out in my givings on my retirement plan. Let me tell you. And I'm I, now I'm looking at okay, can I is there is it possible for me to save five thousand dollars a year so I can for the next ten years so I can roll that bad boy over into a Roth IRA separate from my retirement and from my savings? Let me tell y'all something for y'all, you know. I know I'm going off, I'm all over the place, but I'm gonna tell y'all, some of the young people, if you have found a career, okay, you better begin to save for your retirement. I'm, te I'm telling you now, if somebody had told me this, well, I knew it, but you just didn't pay no attention to it. When I was in my early 20s, when I really first started working, and, and, and you know, when I really started working out here at the company I worked for, oh man, I would have been Save now. I got like I said, I got a little, little, little something, something already built up. But let me just tell y'all something. I am my mindset, and I've talked about this before. My mindset, I gotta focus on Tanya. I can't keep peeling and keep giving and keep giving and keep giving, and then when I retire, I'm still having to pay your bill, his bills, her bills. Uh uh. I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all, it's about me. I'm just going to have to be selfish. It's about Tanya. If something happened to my mother tomorrow uh, or whatever, I have been sustaining myself. I have been living without no assistance from anybody financially. And that's the way it should be. I'm a full grown woman. And I think about, you know, some people who lose their job at 40 and they got to go back and move in with their parents and their parents are 70 75 years old and you 40 something or 50 something and I'm not knocking that I'm not trying to be funny thank God you got somewhere else to go if, if you lose everything or you get a divorce or somebody gets sick in your family and you had to take off and you weren't able to work there are uh, plausible and legit legitimate reasons why people have to move back in with their parents or, or whoever because of, uh, uh, of, of a bad crisis. A natural disaster couldn't displace you. I ain't talking about those type of things, but I'm just saying, if you don't prepare, like the word said, there's a prepared place for prepared people and you better be prepared and stop living on the edge and making decisions and then you look up you ain't got a window a pot to, to you know what in or a window to throw it out of and i'm being serious too many times we look up and we don't have nothing we don't have anything to show for our labor nothing but a bunch of foolishness and materialistic stuff i'm telling you we don't know how this economy, how this world is going to be in the future. And no, if something happened to me tomorrow, I can't take a thing with me. But at least I'll have a small inheritance for my children and my children's children. And I don't have all this and all that, but what I do have, it was from my blood, my sweat, my tears, my perseverance. And like I said, I'm in a season and I, like I said, I'm in a season. Don't because you choose to live on the edge and you know that your decisions will pull on my heartstrings. Just because you choose to live on the edge, don't make decisions that when you get on the edge, you got to reach back and snatch my collar up and grab my arm and grab my neck and grab my hair to keep you from falling off that cliff or falling off that edge. Stop making those type of decisions living on the edge and I got to get drawn into uh, your plight. So this is for anybody that's dealing with, whether it be family members, uh, whoever. I am in a season where it's gonna be all about Tanya. I'm trying, listen, I'm trying to build my empire, if you will. I'm trying to build my uh, ways uh, to make income. So, you know, 
like I said, I, I, you know, I don't know if this was for somebody, but I just felt like I needed to get on and talk about that because I'm telling you, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Don't bother me. Oh, y'all, don't bother me. Don't bother me. And I don't mean y'all, y'all. I'm talking about you. I, I'm just speaking it. I'm putting it out there in the atmosphere. <laughs> Uh, I, I can't, I, I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to do anything for you because I'm right now, I'm building, I'm saving like crazy. These banks ain't playing. They want you to put 20% down on a house now, whether your credit is good, bad, or indifferent. And yeah, there's, there's, there's loans, there's uh, programs out there for first time home, uh, homeowners. And if you qualify for FHA, you can get, uh, only have to put maybe 8% down. But those are far and few in between because of that housing debacle back in 2007 that jacked up the whole infrastructure. You know, these banks ain't playing. <laughs> you better come with the money. Come, come. So uh, that's what your girl is doing. And I pray to God and I speak it that I will get there one day. But uh, until that happens, I am at peace. Um, I ain't stressed up over bills I live within my means I live within my means and that's what I try to tell this Yahoo I'm dealing with you got to live within your means don't look at me because I'm able to buy this outfit and that I, 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 I buy I, I love to dress I love to look a certain way I work in corporate America I have to look a certain way anyway but I'm a bargain shopper. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. I don't buy anything unless it's on sale. I don't even feel right. But that, that's beside the point. I, I, I earn a wage where I can do that. I might not can do it on a big scale, but I can still do it. But I'm living within my means. You think I'm gonna take my bill money or the monies that I earn and I know the, the rents do. I know the light bills do. I know the, uh, uh, whatever else bill is due. Cable, cell phone, whatever. You think I'm going to take that money and spend it? And then when it's due and you're on the verge of getting kicked and getting busted out, you got to run around and ask all these people. Now, I know I talk about this all the time, but I'm telling you, y'all, I don't understand why people continually make decisions and living on the edge and you know like they say you keep doing the same thing over and over and want a different result that's insanity so you know what i've done i said no can't help you and i do it and see what my thing is i would say no but then the pit of my stomach was like well you got it i'm like, what's it gonna hurt but it does hurt because it chips away at my little nest egg I don't have nobody to go to something go to the left. I got to figure it out and work it out on my own, which is how it should be. Because, again, we all grown. But I don't have nobody to call up and say, you know, mm, I'm short on gas today. Oh, no, no, no. I don't have nobody to do that, too. I don't have nobody I can call on. I mean, yeah, like I said, I have an awesome man of God, and he'll give me anything he want. But I don't live my life uh, 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 using up his funds. But now when we go out and want to do something, I don't have to pull out my wallet. That's, you know, that's understood. He's a, he's a full grown man. But I'm just talking about on the regular. No. So if I'm giving out all the time, just because you know I got it, what are you gonna do to make sure you, you build the same mindset well, you always will have it. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, I'm 46. I'm getting older. I got to break that cycle. I got to break those patterns. Uh, and what's they say? Um, you come at my door from now on. Uh, you SOL. <laughs> I mean, you up the creek without a paddle. Uh, you, you in the airplane without a life jacket or whatever. Are you on the ship without a life jacket? Uh-uh. People, you better stop living on the edge because you're gonna reach back and thank somebody there, and ain't nobody gonna be standing there but air, and you sure can't grab air. 
Anyway, I done ran my mouth long enough. It's TGIF, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And we're right here at the weekend. But anyway, like I said, didn't want much of nothing. Just wanted to just talk that process through. And uh, I hope y'all have a great weekend. And uh, I may vlog tomorrow uh, as we enter into the play. You know, I'll, I'll just see how that works out. But anyway, love y'all. God bless. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye-bye.